Thank you very much, Rabbi Lasty, for hosting us this, this afternoon in an act of enormous generosity. Thank you very much, Kyle, and all the organizers for putting together this enormous commemoration for what happened on September 11th, and all of you for showing such enormous commitment on a wonderful day when you could all be doing so many other different things in pursuit of your own objectives. Most importantly, thank you very much for choosing to honor Nelson Mandela on a day like this, when he lies on a sick bed at the age of 95 in Johannesburg. I think Mr. Mandela would not only be honored by the fact that you have chosen to remember him on this day, but you, that you do it through a march, through a walk, for he has described his own life journey as a long walk to freedom. It's a walk that took 27 years in prison, but it is a walk that has been filled with patience, and the patience has been rewarded in the form of him being able to preside over one of the most important transitions that the world has ever witnessed, when everyone expected the worst for a country like South Africa. I'm also happy that you have allowed ourselves to be left, led into this temple by Kwame the drama, because as an African, we know that the language of the drums transcends every language on our countries. <laughs> the language of the drums allows us to suspend our understanding in our brains and to respond to it with the understanding of our hearts. And most importantly, as Africa has learned through every tragedy that has ever befallen Africa, that the language of the drums turns tragedy into opportunity. That we could wallow in tragedy, but we could also seize the opportunity that awaits from the possibilities of renewal. And therefore, on this long walk to freedom, led by the drums, honoring Nelson Mandela, I am very happy to be part of who you are. Looking at this congregation, I'm reminded of about 10 years ago preparing for a speech I had to make in a church in Cape Town. In preparation for it, I stumbled upon the first epistle of St. John, which starts, who lives in God, lives in love, and God in them. And it ends with the word, this you must know, I have given you of my spirit. This last section of that epistle struck me because I had grown up as a Muslim with the words of the Quran ringing in my head in Arabic, in which God says, I have blown of my spirit into you. I discovered a few years later that in the Torah, I think in the book Rabbi of Isaiah, it is more graphically described how God blows of his spirit into each one of us. And the insight in that is that if all of us agree that we are the possessors we are the vehicles for each a part of the divine within us that God has invested of God's spirit in all of us. Then who are we to judge each other by the color of the skin and not by the divine within us? By the texture of our hair and not the divine within us. By what we eat and not the divine within us. By how we pray and not the divine within us. By whether we pray and not the divine within us. It transcends our relationships to a relationship of each one of us, not only being the custodian of the divine within us, but the divine in the other. We may have a problem with someone. We may have a debate with someone. We may even have an argument with someone, but we are never allowed to disrespect the divine that the other carries. Because the divine that the other carries is the divine that we have. The divine that we have been made a trustee of in our own souls is the divine that we must entrust and give trust to in the souls of others. And 
Therefore, we have an enormous responsibility in order for us, in our human relations, it transcends simply the management of our relationships. It begins to speak about how we cherish and respect and give dignity to the divine that we see in each one of us, despite the enormous differences that may exist between us. It is this divine that has allowed Nelson Mandela to say, no one is born hating another because of the color of their skin, the texture of their hair, the language of their tongues, and the way they pray. Nelson Mandela goes on to say that if people can be taught to hate, then they can be taught to love. And that is the purpose for which we come together on a day like this. by the color of their skins, but by the contents of their characters. It is for us to show the world the character, not only of our faiths or our non-faiths, not only of our beliefs or our ideologies, but to show the content of the character of each one of us, so that the world may judge us according to that and not by the superficial features that present themselves to the world. It is this that has made the great Mahatma Gandhi say 